Hello everyone and welcome. In today's video, I'll go over Mistweaver Monk talents, traits and playstyle for Arena. The goals in this video will teach you about positioning and playstyle as a Mistweaver Monk, which will make it easier to keep your team offensive. Mistweaver Monk relies on hots like Renewing Mist and Enveloping Mist to top their target. Besides having very strong hots, they also have quite a lot of burst healing with Surging Mist. There are multiple comps that work well with Mistweaver Monk. Turbo is a very strong melee cleave, since it has a lot of burst damage, but it can also survive delay dampening with off healing and strong defensive cooldowns. DH Warrior also has a lot of pressure, strong defensive cooldowns, and a dispel for CC. This comp has a lot of consistent pressure, and can also survive delay dampening. Windwalker Enhance has a lot of burst damage, but less consistent pressure. This comp can finish games quickly, but isn't as strong defensively, which will make it harder to survive if the game gets dragged out for too long. Your standard talent build will look like this. Cheat Torpedo can be swapped out for Tiger's Lust when facing a class that can kite your DPS easily, for example a mage. Tiger's Lust can be used as extra mobility for your teammate by sacrificing some of your own mobility to generate more pressure. Additionally, it can also be used for yourself if the enemy team does decide to train you. On the level 75 row, all three options are viable. Healing Elixir is a default pick. Diffuse Magic can be used for the spell cleaves that might swap onto you, for example God Comp. And Dampen Harm can be used versus rogue teams to use it before a swap. Summon Jade Serpent Statue can be swapped out for Chigi the Red Crane versus rogue mage teams, since while Chigi is active, it keeps you in combat, meaning you can't get sapped out of a CC, for example Blind. For your PvP talents, there are two talents that should always be picked. Surging Mist and Zen Focus T. Surging Mist is one of your biggest heals and should never be replaced. Zen Focus T makes you immune to interrupts for 5 seconds and should always be picked to free cast healing on demand without having to worry about getting kicked. Your third PvP talent should be Way of the Crane, Dome of Mist, Counteract Magic, Grapple Weapon or Yulon's Gift. Way of the Crane buffs your damage by a ton while active and makes healing multiple targets very easy. However, it does cost a ton of mana. Make sure you use Manatee before using Wave the Crane to reduce the mana cost which will help with managing your mana. Crane should be used for the spread pressure comms or in twos for extra damage. Dome of Mist transforms your remaining healing from Enveloping Mist into an Absorb when purged. It also increases the healing the monk does to the target by 30% and should be used versus teams that will purge your Enveloping Mist constantly, for example any double shaman setup or comms that have multiple purges on their team. Counteract Magic increases the healing of Renewing Mist by 135% when the target has a magical dot active. This talent should be used versus spell cleaves that have multiple dots to maintain, for example Warlocks, Shadow Priests and Boomkins. Grapple Weapon disarms the target for 6 seconds and is one of the weaker talents. However, it can be used versus melee cleaves that will train you in order to stop some damage onto you during setups. Yulon's Gift will dispel all snares on you when Roll or Cheat Torpedo is used. This talent can be picked instead of Grapple Weapon, if you think you can effectively kite a melee cleave that will train you. For your stats, you want to have Mastery and Versatility. Haste is the third option, since it allows you to do more damage, but offers less healing than Mastery and Versatility. Your playstyle will slightly depend on what comp you play. When playing a melee cleave, you will play more aggressive. And when playing a melee caster comp or a spell cleave, you will play more passively. Currently the best comps for a Mistweaver Monk are melee cleaves, but this might change in the future, so adjust your playstyle accordingly. These playstyle goals apply to nearly every comp, and applying them will help improve your gameplay as a Mistweaver Monk. Positioning Positioning and avoiding CC or swaps is your first goal to keep your team offensive. Poor positioning can result in eating more CC or opening yourself up to swaps, which will make you lose the majority of your games. Jumping into the first clip, we can see how one of the top Mistweavers, Trainer, is playing at the pillar to avoid both CC and swaps. Playing like this makes it hard for the enemy team to land swaps and CC onto you. Jumping into the next clip, we can see how Trainer is playing at the pillar to avoid a swap. The enemy rogue uses his hook to get the Trainer, and he can simply paralysis the rogue and cheat torpedo to safety after, since the rogue used all of his mobility to get the trainer. Try to position yourself at the pillar as much as possible, since it will make it harder for the enemy team to land CC or swaps onto you. When facing a melee cleave as a mistweaver monk, you will possibly get trained for the majority of the game. If you play with castles on your team, 
It supported the kite in their line of sight, so they can support you with all fuels and CC to peel the enemy team away from you. In the next clip, we can see how Drainer kites the enemy team. As you can see, Drainer's team is under a lot of pressure, but by kiting close to his DPS, they can slow and peel for Drainer while he kites away from the enemy team. This results in Drainer's team recovering and counter-pressuring the enemy team. Jumping into the next clip, we can see how effective kiting close to your DPS can be. Drainer uses his G2Pedo after coming out of a stun to get away from the enemy team. Since he's kiting close to his DPS, the enemy team is slowed and has no mobility left to connect back onto Drainer. Something as simple as a slow from your partners can be enough to create breathing room. When kiting, make sure you don't kite too far away from your team or the spot where you place your transcendence. If you get caught in a stun without cooldowns or trinket and your partners are unable to peel for you, it will most likely result in losing you the game. Rotate cooldowns. After poor positioning, the second reason you are losing most of your games is because of cooldowns being overlapped. To avoid this, you and your team should communicate on what cooldown to use and when to use it. Your only real defensive cooldown is Life Cocoon, so good communication and avoiding overlapping any cooldowns is your next goal as a Mistweaver. Let's jump into a clip and listen how to communicate with your team. The slope is freak, man. Jesus Christ. Bringing him out oh, of my no. fucking room. 12 freedom. I got it. I got it. Just wait. They really wanna go on me so fucking badly. That might be darkness. I'm rooked. I'm rooked. Tell me. Dark, 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 the next clip is a perfect example of how using a small cooldown with good communication can save you or your team a bunch of other cooldowns, or even prevent you from losing the game. In the following clip, Drain has no trinket available, so a full stun would mean he would most likely die. Let's jump into the clip and see what happens. I can banner the next torch maybe, okay? Be ready. Yeah. Just tell me when you want. Banner now. Na -na -na -na. When listening to high rated teams communicate, they all have one thing in common. When calling for cooldowns, you can hear short and direct wording so the team understands that a cooldown has to be used. If your partners ask you if they have to use a cooldown, then for example say ice block or bubble, or simply say no if they don't need to. Good communication with your team can help you to avoid overlapping cooldowns. Most healers prefer to call cooldowns so their DPS can focus on other aspects of the game. Agree with your team on how you will handle using cooldowns to avoid overlapping them. Support your team with pressure. When your team has pressure and can score a kill, you should leave the pillar and start playing aggressive to finish the game. Support your team with CC or damage. One of the best ways to do this is with wave the crane damage or paralysis into leg sweep. Jumping into the next clip, we can see Drainer's team has a lot of pressure and the enemy healer is out of mana. Drainer moves in to use wave the crane since he's already on Polymorph DR and his team can win the game with just some extra pressure on the Priest. In the next clip we can see how you can support your team with CC. Drainer's team has pressure and Drainer uses Paralysis to stop the mage from casting sheep while his partners connect. He then follows up with Leg Sweep which forces the mage to trinket. Knowing when to leave the pillar is important. If you run into the open to play offensive too early, it could result in the enemy team forcing cooldowns from you instead. Leave the pillar just after coming out of CC, or when your team has a bunch of cooldowns left and the enemy team is completely out of cooldowns. Keep Renewing Mist active on all targets. Renewing Mist has two charges and you should always have at least one charge on cooldown. When counteract magic is picked, Renewing Mist becomes one of your top healing priorities. So the goal is to keep Renew Mist active on all three targets of your team when playing 3v3 Arena. Jumping into the next clip, we can see how Drainer has Renew Mist active on all members of his team. Jumping into another game, we can see again how Drainer keeps Renew Mist active on all members of his team. Renew Mist is normally a small extra hot, but combined with Counteract Magic, it becomes one of your biggest healing spells to keep your team topped against dotcoms or rot cleaves. For example, any comp with a Shadow Priest or Affliction Warlock in it. Fake cast. 
Fake casting interrupts will help you to keep your team topped and is considered the most valuable skill as a healer in PvP. To fake cast as a Mistweaver Monk, you need to stop casting macros shown on the screen. Try to bait interrupts with Soothing Mist and use the macro quickly to cancel it. Jumping into the next clip, we can see how Drainer fake casts to bait interrupts when under pressure. The Demon Hunter connects onto Drainer and he starts casting Soothing Mist and quickly cancels the cast which baits the interrupt from the Demon Hunter. In the next clip we can see how Drainer fakes two big interrupts in a row. Drainer is using quick cast of Soothing Mist to try and bait interrupts and ends up baiting Counterspell from the mage. Shortly after by using the same method, he also baits Solar Beam from the Boomkin the same way. Practice your fake casting by using short and quick cast to try and bait interrupts from players. Some players kick extremely fast and some players hold on to the kick. Figure this out for yourself during the game and adjust your casting accordingly. That's gonna be it for this guide guys, please leave a plus skill if you enjoyed it and let me know what you think in the comments and I'll see you guys next time.